Hello, friends. Welcome to Level Up with Debbie Neal. I am your host. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here, right now with you. This podcast is all about leveling up in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for being here. I am so grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we are leveling up. You ready? Happy August, my Level Up friends, my Level Up family. You guys, I absolutely love a new month. Like, you enter the month, we've got a new month, we've got new goals, we've got new beginnings, and no matter where you are in your business, the way you start your month is so powerful. I haven't done a podcast on tips to have a like just the most amazing month. And so, I mean, you could take the podcast, you could take tips and obviously you apply everything and you start your month with all that. But this podcast is dropping the beginning of August. Okay. So that means you're going to have five months left in 2024. And I want you to look at that and work your business going into this month, giving it everything you have working toward that year end goal. And that's such an important tip because no matter what you do for a living, like people are in, they're out. Oh, let's work today. Let's not work today. Everybody wants like these incredible results, but they're putting in hobby effort. And so our focus, you're on a level up with Debbie Neal podcast. And so our focus is to not be average, to level up to separate ourselves from the rest. And let's be very honest, because I know we can be with one another. Most people in network marketing, we could talk, again, it could be any profession, but I'm a network marketer, whatever you do for a living, but most people, they're in, they're out. Unless you literally have a job that you've got to report to every single day, you're being told what to do, and if you don't do it, you're going to get fired, all right? And so in my profession, that's not the case. And I always say it all the time, the greatest thing about what I do is that I don't have a boss. The worst thing about what I do is that I don't have a boss, right? So average people are, they're in, they're out, you know, I'm going to the top. I could barely get out of my own way. I'm going to do this. Maybe I can't. They're doing the hokey pokey and they're running their day and their month on emotions. And so I just want you to go into this month going, this is your month. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So I wrote some tips down. I want to say I, I have nine um, but they're not numbered. So I'm just going on memory, but let's start with number one because number one's in front of my face. So we talk about this in just about every single podcast. You got to set goals. You have to. Now, look, you could say to me, well, Deb, I don't want to, this is my business. Okay. No goals, no growth. Like your goal is your compass. Your goal is where you're going. Again, it goes back to that, that car analogy. Like I live in New Jersey. If I was going to go drive to Florida, I'm not just going to get in my car and just go and see where the wind takes me. Now, I mean, I guess I could do that if I really want to take this, you know, the slow road to Florida. But if I was going to Florida, I'd be like, okay, I'm, I know that I, well, for example, Bailey goes to school in Tampa. Her dad is taking her to Tampa. They are going to leave on the 21st of August. They know that her school starts on the 23rd. They know it's going to take them 24 hours to get there. Like they're planning the trip. And if they didn't set that goal, imagine it was like, we're just, and they're going to put it in navigation. They're going to, they're going to stop. They could do all the things appropriately. So imagine if they didn't do that, like, let's just get in the car because she's taking her car to school and then he's going to fly home. Let's just get in the car and see where the wind takes us. And if we're meant to end up in Florida on the 21st, that's what's going to happen. Like it doesn't work that way. Set goals and write them down. Now we've heard this, the statistic, you have a 70% higher chance of achieving your goal by writing it down. Now, is that a guarantee? No, but when you're writing it down, some it's, there's like an energy transfer. It's like coming to life. You're looking at it. Like you're actually looking at that number and maybe that number is going to scare you. And then you're like, wow, like I just keep throw. Sometimes people just throw numbers out there and I'm like, look, I think you're perfectly capable, but are you going to write it down? Are you going to come up with an action plan? Like what's going on here? Okay. So write, set a goal. If you haven't done it already, and, and cause this is not coming out till let's say I'm recording today. It's the first, it's coming out on the second or whatever, whatever Monday is the fourth, fifth. Okay. If you haven't written down a goal, but what happened in those five days? So write that goal down, share it with your family. If you want your family 
to take your business serious, you need to take your business serious. Enroll them in it. Share it with your family. Now, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I want to have an accountability buddy. People ask me something. You do you. Okay. I'm not the biggest fan of an accountability partner. Okay. If you really need somebody pushing you, you really want that to be yourself. And let me tell you something. What if your accountability partner doesn't do it? What if they may, like, again, you you could have one that's going to push you, but then you're the one that they've got to push. So I, I don't love the whole accountability partner. Like if you've got five people and they're all in the same place, if you're going to have one, have that accountability partner that is where you want to be and they have a thriving business and they have what it takes to, to coach you to that level and also have conversations with you to that level. And when you're feeling tired or you're feeling defeated or you don't feel like doing it, that's not the time to call your accountability partner. Cause I'm going to tell you this with so much love. That's almost selfish. You two have this, the same goal. Let's just say neither one of you have gone there yet. And if you're feeling uninspired or you didn't do what you said you're going to do, or you didn't do the amount of reach out, you're going to send it to that person. And now all of a sudden you're giving that person permission to not do their very best. So as you set a goal, I want you to be very honest and I want you to be very clear with yourself. What are you willing to do to achieve this? Like that's that question. Like, what are you willing to do? I love building a business that's merit-based. That's what I love so much about the industry that I'm in. But too often when goals aren't met, it usually comes down to one of two things. One, we attempted to bargain with the price. Like, oh, maybe we don't have to do this and maybe we don't have to be so consistent or maybe we can skip over that, or, right? Or maybe we can reinvent the wheel. So we attempted to bargain with the price or honestly, we just didn't want it bad enough, okay? And this is where you want to have a come to Jesus moment with yourself. Decide, like, how bad do you want it? And what are you willing to do to create it? I want you to stretch. Like, if your goal doesn't scare you, right? It's just not big enough. But on the same sense, I want you to be realistic. Now, I don't love the word realistic. To even say that word makes my skin crawl. But I want to, I want you to know what I mean by that. And first of all, I understand it's a catch-22 because I'm a person that believes you could go from zero to a hundred quickly. Okay. But I also know that takes serious effort. It takes vision. It takes discipline. It takes activity. It takes mindset. It takes leadership. It takes a lot of things that the average person needs to build first. So I want you to focus on improving every single month. And one of the things that helped me tremendously, and you guys have heard me talk about this several times, but when I started my business 18 years ago, I had never been in a business like this before. In fact, I never sold a thing in my life. And I, I saw the big goal. Like I, you might start a business, but like, you know, I want to be here and this is what I want to earn. And I can't see the top yet. I came in and I was like, I see the top. I see that income. I see the no glass ceiling. Like I understand it's not average. I understand it's not normal, but I also know that I can do this, but I had never sold a thing in my life. I had no idea about the industry. And so I didn't have what it took yet to set these big, you know, huge audacious goals. So what I did was I set 24 to 48 hour goals and I would just, you know, and they were different all the time. Because goal setting is a skill set and committing to your goal is a skill set. Creating urgency around that goal is a skill set. So we as leaders build that. We all start somewhere. And here's the thing with setting 24 and 48 hour goals. It's you and you alone. You're working in the dark. It's not like I was making an announcement for every 24 and 48 hour goal that I set. You are training like a champion. You are doing what 99% of the people don't do. Most sit there, right? Until they feel ready. Like I just got to sit there. I don't want to move. Like, but friends, that doesn't happen organically. You are qualified. Action builds confidence. It's the little things that build up over and over again. And that is what creates the big things. One of the things I also did, I took an old school calendar, you know, like the kind that you flip, and I cut out all the days after the 15th. You guys, our mindset is really, really powerful. I knew that I had 30 or 31 days in the month, but I wanted to do more. I wanted to put, I had to play mind tricks with myself. So in my mind, there was only 15 days in the month. 
and let's really be honest, very transparent for a moment. I'm just speaking for myself. Most of us waste a lot of time. We're living in a world with so many distractions. Building a successful business takes discipline. Set the tone, tell your family, write it down, speak it out loud, and affirm it daily that this is your month. Okay, number two, never, ever, ever let go of the goal, okay? You guys, life is going to happen. Good life, bad life, distracted life, chaotic life. As you're navigating and building your business, it doesn't make you a bad person to still take your business seriously and also live your life. It's so easy to declare a goal at the beginning of the month, right? We feel renewed. We feel energized. We're like, yes, this is our month. And then 90% or more of people release their goal by the 10th of the month. Instead of declaring it with conviction, they're kind of mentioning it. They're like not really committed to it. Believe, Remember, belief has a sound. They say they didn't pull back, but they did. Here's the thing. Energy is powerful. I feel the ones who do. I know the ones that are MIA. They pull back. All of a sudden, they're busy. They justify, they make excuses. Now, here's the thing you're a business owner. You don't have a boss. We just talked about that. That's a plus. It could also be a nightmare. You have to hold yourself accountable. Stay like, what if you had a regular job and they said, This is your goal? This is the system for success. You have to achieve this goal every single month or you'd be fired. Now, you know that that's not the case, but what would your business look like if you adopted that mindset? Again, it goes back to my 24 and 48 hour goals. You're playing mind games with yourself to train your mind to outwork everyone, okay? So stand in that goal. And what's going to happen as you go through your month, the plan is going to change a hundred times. It just is. Like, it just is. People are going to change. Circumstances are going to change. People might say they're going to do something and they're not. New people might join your business. You know, it's going to be all of those things. But it takes you, you believing that it's going to happen. Your team will never have bigger belief than you. Your team will never have bigger goals than you. It takes believing that it's going to happen. What you focus on expands. You are leading your ship. You are setting the tone. You are building trust with your team. So stay true to your goal. Fall in love with the process. Stay in the energy and the mindset right up to the last possible minute. And the reality is, is that's why most people don't. They just don't. And that's why they end up staying in the in-between for so long. This is where it takes the decision and the discipline to be different. What if it is hap- like work as if it's happening. Speak as if it's happening. Coach your team as if it's happening. Share your business and your products as if it's happening. For me, each 24 and 48 hour goal I set prepared in my mind that I was completing not only my monthly goal, but I continue to tell myself that once you do this, Deb, you're promoting to the top of your company. Once this is done, you're promoting to the top of your company. I, again, played with my mind. That wasn't the truth, but I would ask myself, Deb, what if that was the truth? What if this is what you'd have to do and you would earn that rank? Would you do it? I was like, yes, I would do it. So I did it. And then what happened is my mind started building discipline and I started to believe it. Most people start like, I'm going to next month it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to next, you know, next month, next month. And they might not even say it out loud, but the minute they feel off, they're like, next month's my month. Because they have the mindset, like, why would I put in this effort? Why would I do all this if I don't hit my goal? I'm going to tell you why. Because if you next month it, you're going to next year it. Before you know it, you're going to look up, it's five years from now, and you're still next month in it. You've got to create that momentum. You've got to go for it. You are building building your leadership, building your business, building your skill set. And that doesn't stop. When you stop it, it's like, it's like you're on, you're off, you're on, you're off. So adopt that mindset. I'm telling you with all of the love in my heart, if you next month it, you will end up next 
yearing it. Goals are rolling. You go as long and as hard as you can. You give this all that you have. And you know, when I say that, people are like, I don't want to work 24 hours a day. Let's be honest. You're not working 24 hours a day. I'm not working 24 hours a day. What I'm saying is when you're working, give it everything you have. A lot of people are like, I'm working. You're not, you know, you're posting a picture of yourself and you know, maybe your products and you're like hashtag dream life. No. Like that's not working your business. Give it all that you have. Make the connections. Be present. Go for it. Do that all month and then start again. That's how you end a month strong and that's how you begin the next month strong. I want you to think about it. If you end strong, you're st- and like you're rolling right into the next month, right? With fire, energy, and momentum. So most people want to work this month. Like you're in August. You have a goal. And, and at some point, if you feel like it might not happen, well, first of all, level up, work harder, make up that gap, make up the time, you know, that you missed or you wasted or things didn't go your way, but go, 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 go. You win either way. You're either going to hit your goal. You're going to surpass your goal, or maybe you'll miss your goal, but you're so far ahead than where you were last month. And then you're going to roll into next month like a champion and maybe surpass it next month. So when we stop and we go and we stop, we go versus rolling into the next month. Amazing. We're like reigniting that fire from starting and stopping. So that is tip number two, stay true to your goal each and every month. Number three, which again is tying into the same thing, treat every single day of the month like it's the last day of the month. And this is very connected to to the last two tips. Okay. We just talked about it. It's standing your goal. It's creating urgency. It's creating closed day energy. It's stretching. So like, you know, when you're going for those really big goals, a lot of times it requires a really big sales goal in the last few days of the month. You're preparing that when you treat every single day as the close. Like, so maybe like you treat one day, like, you know, I'm going to create 2000 in sales or 1000 in sales or 500 in sales, whatever it is based on your business. And you actually hold yourself accountable to that. and then you do it again and then you do it again and then you teach other people and you do it again. That's how you're creating that compound effect, okay? You're standing in the goal. You're creating the urgency. You're creating that closed day energy. Closing a month strong for big goals requires you to practice and train. This is how you practice and train. You're never, you you know, we have the Olympics going on right now. You're not just going to show up at the Olympics because you have interest in gymnastics, okay? There's years of training there. This is how you do it. Everyone loves the idea and the vision of the big goals, the big posts, the big goals, the big celebrations, the big wins. But all of that starts with mastering the small, setting the goals, working in the dark, working when nobody's clapping for you, making like it's the close, living in your commitment. This is where your best self lives. This is where the big conversations take place. The amazing coaching exists in this space. This is where you level up. Okay. Number four, commit to the activity. Building a business takes consistent activity. Like it's not like, oh my gosh, let me just have an amazing you know, activity for a couple of weeks and then I'm going to ride on it. Stop resting or resisting what you need to do. There is not a secret pill to succeed. You aren't missing some big aha thing. Now, with that said, we're work in progress and we're always growing, we're always evolving, evolving, we're always building skills. But success is found in your daily habits. Work your business consistently. That's how you'll never have to work it constantly. And I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine that you are a salary employee. Okay. Cause most of my listeners are entrepreneurs. Okay. What is the income? And look, you could be a salary employee striving for more, right? So this can pertain to you. What is the income in your business or your job that you aspire to make? Is it 20,000 a year? Is it a hundred thousand a year? Is it 250,000 a year? Is it a million plus a year? Now I want you, I want you to really think about that as you run your day at the end of each day. So like, I know when I started my business, I'm like, you know, I was like, I want to make a million dollars a year. I want to make a million dollars a year. And I would just tell myself that over and over. I knew it wasn't normal. I knew it wasn't typical, but it was like, it was just a big, awesome goal. And I wanted to expand in that space. So at the end of each day, whatever that number is for you, I want you to ask yourself a few questions. If every, number one, if everyone on my team 
did today, what I did today, what would my business look like? Okay, that's number one. Number two, if I was getting a salary of, you fill it in, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, what? Did I earn it? Did I earn that? Ask yourself, whatever I did today, did it get me closer to my goal? Ask yourself, whatever I did today, did I do my very best? Again, it, it, a business like mine doesn't require seven, eight hours a day. No, it doesn't. But it does require excellence when you really want to take yourself to the next level. When you work your business consistently, you'll never have to work constantly. Activity creates. This is where you make new contacts. This is where you make sales. This is where you feel happy. This is where you build confidence. Whenever we're feeling unworthy in our business, it's because we know deep down we're not doing what we should be doing. Fill your calendar. Create activity over and over and over again. This is what we do. Okay. Number five, only speak of what you want. You guys, like if you need to get a rubber band, you need to zap yourself. And me, I'm 18 years in this profession and not only in this profession, but I'm 18 years of personal growth, doing the journaling, doing the reading, doing the coaching, doing the training. And I still have to be like, Deb, watch the words coming out of your mouth. Okay. We're human. Only speak of what you want. So when things don't go right in your business, don't say them out loud. If people quit your business, don't say them out loud. Don't only speak about what you want. Speak of possibility. Your words have power. So no excuses, no complaining, no justifying, okay? And FYI, when you start a sentence with, I'm not being negative, you're being negative. Yeah, you are. Only speak of what you want. Only speak of your vision. Speak about what you're grateful for. Make that your mission every day. Okay. Number five, enjoy the journey. You got to love it. You know, I don't love everything I need to do in my business, but I love my business enough to do everything. Does that make sense? Like sometimes I don't feel like picking up the phone. Sometimes I don't feel like having, you know, conversations. Sometimes I, sometimes I don't, I'm human but I love what I do. I love my business. I love my team. I love my company. I love inspiring other people to be more. So just enjoy the journey. Even when I fall, even when I fail, I'm like, what can I learn from this? It's a journey, right? Success is a journey. Fall in love with what you are creating. Fall in love with the mundane. Embrace the challenges. Weather any storms. Be the lighthouse and continue to stretch. Number six, devour personal growth. Please don't think you could skip this step. Leaders are readers. The more you read, the more you're going to grow. You're never going to out earn or outgrow your level of personal growth and development. So start your day off every single day with 30 minutes of reading. Put the phone down. Stop the scrolling. What, what Tom, Dick, and Harry are doing today is not as important as growing your leadership. The, 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 the whole what's going on in the United States of America right now with, you know, the elections and everything, that's not the way you start your day. It's just not because unfortunately, not only is it, I don't even want to say a little bit of a crazy show that's going on, but you got people fighting with one another. Like it's just not the energy that you want to start with. Start with personal growth. Fill your brain with so much good that you starve the doubt. Number seven, show up like the top leader in your company. Think about who that is. You have somebody you aspire to be like, if, if, if your team is having a Zoom, you guys have heard me say this before, put your camera on. Like, you know, put your camera on. I'm not saying this from a judgment point of view. I, I am here to give you tips on how to have an amazing month, okay? So if one of your goals is to grow to the top of your company or be that person that somebody wants to follow, show up like you're running the Zoom. Show up like you're running the meeting. Like look professional. Like, and I've said this before on other podcasts, people will text me and be like, I just want to let you know my camera's off because I'm laying in bed. All right. Why, why is your ass laying in bed? I don't even understand. Or, you know, my camera's off because I'm cooking. Like, what if I was doing the meeting in person? What if I was in a hotel right now? Would you show up and make spaghetti and meatballs? I, I don't even respond to those texts. And, and again, I don't care. I'm not anybody's boss. 
But if you want to take your business to the next level, I really want you to ask yourself, like, who are the people that you aspire to be most in your business and your company? Would they show up that way? Okay. Now I can't say that I've never had my camera off. Sometimes I'm driving. Sometimes I'm not the host of a call and sometimes I'm, I'm where I need to be. It's very rare. It's very few between. And I got to also be honest, I've had 18 years of building this and every now and then I earn that but it's very, very rare. So if you're in the position, you're like, I want to I wanna be that person and, and lead my team to the next level, show up. If there's an event, bring guests to events, show up at events, participate, offer to lead, be a leader, be the lighthouse, always be there, always shining. You want to just show up for everything. And that's every call, every meeting, be the first to arrive, be the last to lead, like be willing to make sacrifices, right? That's what success takes. There's times growing my business, I missed things. I can remember, and I've talked about this story before, I grew to the top of my company and you know, you could see the earnings statement, but I don't talk about my particular company because we have so many other network marketing companies here and I just want it to be an amazing space for all of you. Um, however, like I, I grew to the top of my company and, and we were hustling, we were moving. And I was out seven nights a week. I made that choice. I was okay with the sacrifices. I was in love with the journey. I was in love with what I was building. And I could remember my daughter, Brooke, who's about to, in the next few months, go to the top of my company right alongside with me. Um, she, she said to me, like, just promise me you're not going to work on my birthday. Make me that one promise. And I was like, okay, baby girl, your birthday is November 14th. I will make that promise to you. And then what happened is the person who was at the top and she scheduled the meeting on November 14th. And wow, like at that meeting was going to be, you know, me recognized, my team recognized, promotions that happened. Now, as moms, especially, sometimes we're like, well, I love my kids so much. I gave my, my daughter was six at the time turning seven. I gave her my word. Let me tell you, friends, I did give her my word, but I also gave her my word that I was going to create the best life for us that I possibly could that I was going to do everything in my power so she wouldn't have student loans, that I was going to create a business that would allow me to have time flexibility to be there when she really wanted me to be there. Sometimes that took hard conversations. And so I sat my sweet girl down and I said, you know, again, it's all in the delivery. I could have been like, I'm so sorry. I said I would be there, but this came up. I didn't schedule the meeting. I was like, baby girl, guess what? We're going to a meeting on your birthday and the meeting is going to be, you're going to stay up past your bedtime. We're going to, you know, go out after for dinner. And it was all in the delivery. And she, from day one at the time, you know, she was a huge part of my why. I didn't necessarily know she'd be in my business, but because the way I built my business and how serious I took it and the respect that I gave it, and it didn't mean I loved them less. It means that I loved them more. She had a solid foundation of how to build her business. So there are sacrifices that are required if you really want to build a big business. Number nine, commit to excellence. And I want you to take some time and I want you to make a list. Make it today, okay? And I want you to write down every quality you would love at a business partner. You're bringing somebody into your business or you're hiring somebody in your company, qualities that you would just love for leaders on your team. And so when I think of that, gosh, some of those qualities for me would be a visionary, someone who takes ownership, someone who's self-motivated, someone who's committed to personal growth and development, someone with high standards, grateful, urgent, like they, they're hungry to earn bonuses, earn trips. They influence other people to move in the most amazing way. They bring out the best in people. They light up a room. There's someone to follow. They always have a goal. They challenge themselves. They inspire others. Make that list. And now what qualities on that list do you embody? We don't attract what we want. We attract what we're being. So become that leader that you want to attract in your business. I want you to realize that this is more than a month to month business. I want you to put your foot on that gas and I want you to stay on that gas. Momentum is consistent activity compounded over time. Stand in your word. Do what you say you are going to do. Commitment. People follow commitment. They're loyal to commitment. Let the energy and the vision you have right now stay with you all month. The secret to success is in the little things. Most people miss that. Most are in and out. Most run a business on emotion. Most are trying to reinvent the wheel. 
Focus on getting better every day. Make daily improvement your focus. Do everything a little bit better and watch what happens over time. People avoid the small things. They don't realize the value. They want the big promotions, the big goals. And most think the little things aren't the secret. Learn your business, master your industry, commit to excellence, stay true to your word, go out and lead yourself and your team to the top. You have it in you. Be willing to give up who you are for who you're willing to become. So happy new month, my friends. Do the little things. Trust me on this. And you're going to look up a year from now and be blown away. I believe in you.